Hey guys, welcome back to another Wednesday night Bible study. We are just one week and a few days away from Christmas. This year has flown by, and especially the last couple months, has went so fast. So, some of you love Christmas and you've probably been playing Christmas music already. After Thanksgiving, you ran and got your tree up. I know Sister Jessie did. She actually was playing Christmas music last Saturday night while we were, she was in the kitchen doing something and then we made those little chocolate things that we passed out Sunday. So it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Well, here in East Texas, it doesn't feel like it because it's, what, 74 to 75 degrees outside right now? And it was freezing a few nights ago. So, who knows what it's going to be at Christmas time? I have no clue. And so all the decorations are up. Our neighborhood has lights in it. Um, you can go and see Santa Land. And a lot, of the, a lot of the festivities and a lot of the things that are surrounding the Christmas holiday season. But as it gets closer... We're going to be, or especially our kids, are going to be more excited and excited. And we as parents, we get the, the great gift of watching our kids unwrap stuff. And, and it's probably a big highlight. Some, some people save up all year so they can get something nice for their kids. And um, our church is actually able to bless a family this year. By the way, if you have not given for that, uh, you can give online at connect-church.com and go to the Give tab and you can pick, I think it's the outreach category and uh, Sister Cassie and Brother Jeff are going to go uh, this coming weekend and we actually just got off the phone. We're going to be um, <clears throat> the 21st. We're going to go give the gifts and uh, just bless that family. Uh, that the church has selected. And I am so thankful to be a part of a church family who has the heart of giving. God blesses a church when a church understands the value of giving. Uh, I've seen that personally in my life, and I hope that you take that and apply it as well. Because if you don't, you're missing out on some of the best blessings. It's hard to be stingy during this time of year it's hard to be down on yourself this time of year if you give. I know that doesn't make any sense because it feels like you would think you'd feel better if you get something, but actually the opposite. Uh, you find somebody who has a fulfilled life, they give a lot. They're always giving out. They're always trying to bless somebody else. And it's a blessing to be able to bless somebody. So, opening thought. It's not what's under the tree that matters. It's who's gathered around it. That uh, was quoted by someone anonymous. But gathering over a meal, we just did it for Thanksgiving a few weeks ago. This is a common Christmas occurrence. Actually, at my mom's, we're going to go up there um, to Branson. We're going to spend Christmas with her. And then we're going to go to my dad's and, and spend Christmas with my uh, grandparents on my dad's side uh, up even further in Missouri. And it's kind of a, a time where you sit around with each other. You get to enjoy um, the people that you're with, your family. Some of you, you may not enjoy it. But let me challenge you with something. Enjoy it whether you like them or not because one day a Christmas may come and they may not be at your table. They may pass away. Something may happen tragically. And they're taken from the earth like that. And you don't have the opportunity to say, I'm sorry, or try to fix what was wrong between you. Now, this is going to be something that will challenge your pride. Because if you don't feel like you're in the wrong, you don't want to apologize. Or you don't think you have anything to apologize for. When actually the Bible says, if you are sacrificing to me, if you're at the altar sacrificing to me, and you remember that there is something in between you and someone else, not if there's something that that person has, that you've done to that person, if there's something just between you to stop 
and go fix it. That's how important relationships are to God. Family gatherings, office parties, team appreciation activities. There's an array of opportunities to celebrate relationships and show love to people that we're deeply connected to. We just had Sunday our uh, church Christmas party. If you missed it, sorry you weren't able to be there. We didn't live stream because the kids did a, the kids put on the show. Uh, shout out to Pastor D and her family for making all of that possible with the tables and the decorations and and hurting our kids. It's like herding cats. And they did an amazing job. Uh, the black light was so cool. Um, and it was just a cool... So we weren't able to live stream because it was black light. You probably wouldn't be able to see it very well. And we didn't take pictures either. So sorry if you missed it. Hopefully someone you know got something on their phone. But these kind of celebrations and get-togethers are kind of the highlight of the year. Like you start seeing on the streaming stuff or if you watch cable or anything like that, you start seeing Christmas holiday movies and someone's falling in love and there's some kind of Christmas miracle and all this other stuff. And, and too often we enjoy a meal with people until we don't enjoy a meal or don't go out to eat with somebody or don't partake in uh, coming together with people unless it's a holiday. We celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Easter, uh, with secondary holidays in between, but sadly, we don't connect with people when we're made to do just that. I'm very guilty of this. If somebody is not, if I don't interact with them weekly, they go to the back burner and I forget to reach out to them or forget to communicate with them because I'm so busy. I get tunnel vision and I start only seeing what's right in front of me. There's something special about gathering together and enjoying the relationships that God has put in our lives and blessed us with. And the Bible is full of uh, examples and statements that, um, that we can only accomplish with one another. You have to have someone else. Let's give some biblical examples of what I'm talking about. John chapter 13, verse 34, it says, love one another. Galatians 5, 13, it says, serve one another. Ephesians 4.32, it says, forgive one another. Romans 12.10 says, honor one another. And James 5.16 says, pray for one another. Are you getting the common theme through here? God desires for us to not only have a relationship with him, that should be our one priority, but very closely second, he says for us to show care and to be in relationship with each other. It's important because if you've ever been in a hard place in your life, the worst thing you can do is spiral and cut yourself off from everybody else. Because we find strength when we're together. We become more encouraged when we're together. In order to fulfill so much in God's word, we must gather with one another more often. So why not do something every month? If you've noticed here recently, we've tried to been we have been trying to do something every month. Whether it's our fusion marrieds, uh, whether it's the the fishing group, uh, brother Josh is going to get back on that uh, after the holiday season because people are not available. Uh, and then we have the the Christmas thing that we just did. We have the growth track. We're doing the, the second class this coming Saturday at five p.m. at our house. So the more we do things together, the, the tighter knit our relationships become. And that leaves less room for the devil to be able to divide and get in the, the evident cracks by different personalities or different backgrounds. And, and there's all kinds of different stuff that we were raised different. We don't come from the same side of the tracks or, or uh, we have parents that are divorced or my parents have been married their entire life or my parents have something weird going on, or I'm in a divorce, or I'm trying to get out of a divorce. And there's all kinds of things that can cause issues. But if we come together and we spend time together, we get to know one another. We begin to invest, very important word, we begin to invest into each other's life. When I have struggle, when you have trouble, we can call each other up and we can be there for each other. And it makes us feel less secluded and more included, which is... The scriptures I just read is biblical proof that God desires that for us. Even in the beginning in Adam and Eve, 
He created Adam, but he realized that Adam needed companionship. He needed someone else there to be alongside him, to be a companion and do life with. That's how important it is to God that he even started off creation in that way. So why don't we make the effort to invite people over more regularly? This is this was one of my prayers when Sister Jesse and I was looking for a house over here in Longview. Is that I, I, it's just a very simple but meaningful to me is God, I want, I want a house that I can open up my home and have church people over and there can be room to do things. And He has blessed us with that. And it's, it is my greatest heart desire to, to have people to feel like they are a part of our lives. That's why we have the growth track at our house because we want people to feel like they have a stake in the ground in our lives like we do theirs. If you feel secluded at church or you feel like maybe nobody's really talking to you, you may see here's what we do and this is this is human nature. So you're going to have to work really hard especially if this is what you gravitate towards. This is what we do when we feel like we're not included or we feel like we're not a part of something. We actually start to pull back and seclude ourselves even more while complaining about not being included. This is human nature. Everyone does this in some fashion. I even do it. If I feel like I'm not being included, I won't say much and I'll just sit there. I'm guilty. So if I do it and I'm an extrovert and I go and talk to almost anybody, I know that you probably do it too. Especially if you're more geared towards introvert, you're a homebody. I like to go. Like when I was in high school, my mom was always talking about me getting in the car and just going. I didn't care where we were going. I wanted to go somewhere and I wanted to have fun. But we have to make an effort, especially if you're not geared for talking to people or geared towards having people become a part of your life. Now, it doesn't mean you have to include them in your small, tight inner circle. Jesus only included three out of the 12. There's going to be people in your life that you can always depend on. You can always lean on. You can come to for prayer. You can tell them your most intimate struggles and details of things that you're going through, and it will stay with them and go no further. But then outside of that circle is people that you still trust, you care about, and you show towards them that you actually do care. This this isn't a suggestion to have a party every month. Although, what's up with some good food? As Pentecostals know how to do it. And eat Christmas cookies every month, all the time. I, my, my waist doesn't need that. Although you can certainly do this if that's your preference. But <laughs> don't whine about diabetes if you're eating sugar all the time. I'm not judging. Now this is a call to gather more often with friends and family and church people. To not wait until a holiday to spend time or to invite somebody over or to make memories with those at the church or in your family, but celebrating our friendships with others and loving on our family members is something that is encouraged for us to do, and this honors God. So, I always try to leave you with the challenge. Number one, how often do you contact gather with, and enjoy the company of those that you say that you love. This could be friends. It could be family. Uh, We're on a church Bible study, so church people. I challenge you to ask somebody that you've never went out to eat with, take them out for lunch after Sunday, One, one, one Sunday. Just say, hey, what are you doing for lunch? And don't be offended if they can't go that time. Don't give up because you ask once, and it didn't work out. If I would have had that mentality, I would have never got married to Sister Jessie because she told me no a couple of times. But you see who won that one? Because I didn't take no for an answer. Because I was determined to build that relationship. How determined are you? Are you going to come to church and just consume and be happy with coming in, shaking hands, running out at the end of the service? Or maybe it would be more valuable and longer sustainable in the church house if we take time to break bread together. 
That seems kind of logical, but we often push it to the back and we forget to on purpose build our relationships with people in the church house. So what I would do is I would get a piece of paper or you can do it on your phone digitally in your little notes if you've got an iPhone or whatever Android has and make a list of people that you don't know very well and make it a point over the next, let's do a long-term thing. Let's do over the next six months, you pick three families that maybe you barely even know their name or you don't know their name yet. I'm terrible with names. My wife is amazing at names. I have to ask her all the time and I feel embarrassed. I was, uh, you may know Sister Bridget, um, Brother Rusty's wife. We were sitting at the first meal we ever ate together and they were telling a story. I think Brother Dale was telling, the bass player was telling a story and he said something about Bridget and I said, who's Bridget? And she went, that's me. I was so embarrassed. But I never forgot her name after that <laughs> because it really embarrassed me and stuck with me. So make a list of names. It could be two families, three families, or just start small. Small steps still count as steps. Do one family. Make it a point. One family over the next three months that you try to get to know better. And I guarantee you, you're not going to be best friends with all of them. But that effort on the other side of them looking at you will mean more than you can ever imagine. And they will view you in a different way because you took the time to get to know them where they are. That's the biggest problem with some of the churches and, and we're, we're pushing to get outside of our church building is that we want people to come to us, but sometimes we get very complacent and and conform to where we are. We want people to come in. We're not willing to go out. Thank God for our outreach. Because we are on the move to getting further and further out. We're a small church. We can only do what we can do. But thank God that we have people that are wanting to serve the community. Shout out to Cassie and Jeff. They are amazing. So, this coming Sunday, the title of my message is Tis the Season. And we're going to be talking about how we can get wrapped up in gifts, all the joy. I mean, we start feeling good when Christmas comes. We get happy. We find joy. But we're going to talk about some serious things to where this feeling that you have now is supposed to be about Jesus Christ coming on this earth. If that's the case, then this joy and this good feeling that we got going on, this peace, peace and goodwill towards man can be a year around every month feeling. It's not just for one month or one season. It is sustainable for every season that we go through. I love y'all, praying for y'all, and we will see y'all Sunday morning at 1030.